Everybody on WSBR Radio, 7.40 a.m. No, we have not changed the format here at five minutes after four o'clock on the East Coast. Back from a Christmas and New Year's and all of those things, we have not changed the format to oldies, though we could. could be pretty good. You know, <laughs> we, we are highlighting a very special day with somebody by the name of... Louie. Louie, Louie. Yeah. Um, Congressman Louis Gomert, amazing announcement yesterday. And uh, we, on the cutting edge of uh, educational, cultural, national security, radio and TV, here at WSBR Radio in Boca Raton, are bringing you an exclusive report on Louis Gomert, Congressman Louis Gomert from the great state of Texas where you can start in the morning and drive all day and keep driving until the next day and not even get to the middle of the state or something like that. Uh, but Louis announced yesterday that he is uh, going to take put the gloves on and get in the ring with uh, Congressman John Boehner from Ohio. Boehner is the Speaker of the House. Louis says, you know what? I think this country's had enough of Boehner. He said it a little more nicely like than, than that, but maybe not. And uh, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in there, and I am going to be a candidate for the Speaker of the House of Representatives, the United States of America, the U.S. Congress, and the 114th Congress. That's what he said. Good. <clears throat> I tell you what, uh, it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, the whole announcement and everything took us all by surprise. It really it did. Was, it, it really was a surprise. I was a, sitting there. A uh, pleasant surprise. Pleasant surprise. Uh, as we get through this, we're going to well, tell you who Louis, Go Louis Gomart is and why Louis Gomart ought to be the next Speaker of the House. The title, the big idea for this show is Run, Louis, Louis Win. Run, win. No, no, no. Read the script. I did. Run, <laughs> Louis, Win. Those three right words here. have yep. been selected have because we are <laughs> encouraging him to do something he's already done, though we've encouraged him for a long time to run for elevated offices. So right. he's running. His name is Louis. We want him to win. But he's already won. In terms of revolutionizing our culture and our country, without bombs and bullets. It is going to take men and women, men and women out there right now, in the sound of my voice, in the, uh, I guess if you're watching even on uh, internet TV, you hear the sound of my voice. It's gonna take men and women to actually get up off your butts and run and do something. This could be a very um, a detrimental decision that uh, a four-term congressman, he's been in for, eight years, two years each term, now got reelected for his fifth term. Right. It could be very detrimental to his future. When you go after the top dog and you lose, and uh, you know we don't know if he's going to win or lose. We're going to get into that. The top dog then says, oh, where's Gomart's office? Is it on the fifth floor? Guess what? It's now, do we have a sub-basement here at the U.S. <laughs> Capitol? Because that's where Gomart's going for thinking of challenging me. Or... What committees does he sit on? No, he's on the judicial. Well, committee. he doesn't sit on anything right now because he's he's such in Boehner's well, doghouse. He's on a couple. He's on a couple little committees. We'll get into what? that. But he'll be on the dog catching committee. <laughs> he's going to be on the uh, the cockroach catching committee <laughs> at the sub basement of the U.S. Capitol. So, what's the big idea? If you have to leave right now in your automobiles, you go. I can't listen anymore. I got to go do this. I got a doctor's appointment or whatever. The big idea we want to start out 2015 with, ladies and gentlemen, is in order to make the systemic and significant changes we need to in our country, in our culture, in the way we do business politically, the way we do business on a foreign policy level, these policy issues, 
People are going to have to get up and run, get up and do something. That's the big idea. If Louis Gomer, who really has, is at a point in his life where he can take it easy, if he's decided, no, I'm going to live on principle, then all of us do. And if all of us do, the we the people concept, we can impact this country and this culture dramatically. And we need to do that over the next 672 days. Thank you, Louis Gohmert. Whether you win, lose, or draw, you have won in our opinion, and you have motivated Americans all over the place to get up and do something. Well, and, he, and to highlight your point, this, you remember I keep talking about the goalpost, pushing the conversation, because the left has done a masterful, masterful job moving the issues to the left. For 50 years. For 50 years. Louis Goldman up there talking about it and challenging Boehner, you know, throws a stop sign in front of Boehner, says, you've gone too far. You've gone way too far, Boehner. Here's a stop sign. I have a massive amount of American people behind me. And what that does, it takes that goalpost and moves it to the right a little bit. Yep. It changes the, uh, you know, we don't like that term narrative, but it changes the narrative indeed. So what does our show have for you today? Today mm -hmm. we're going to look at Louis Gohmert. We're going to look at his life, his education, his profession, because you probably don't know who he is. He's been sort of in the background, quiet guy, but a very deep, very important guy. His family life, his social issues, his political career, his offices, his accomplishments. Then we're going to look at the position of Speaker of the House. What is it? What authority does it flow from? What's its purpose? How long are you a speaker? How do you get elected the speaker? Then we're going to look at the speaker, John Boehner. And we all thought he could be the great conservative hope. We're going to look at the same categories by which we compare Louis Gohmert. We're going to compare John Boehner. And we're going to conclude, Boehner must go, Louis must win. But the election is when? Tomorrow. Huh? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. The election is tomorrow. Yes. The way it works, the first day of the new Congress, and as I said, the new Congress is entitled the 114th Congress. Uh, the first day is tomorrow, the 6th of January. On the first day of the new Congress, the majority selects a Speaker of the House. This is the way the Constitution mm -hmm. lays it out. This is the way it's been done. You go, well, how come so short a period of running? Really, the people that want to be the speakers start right after Election Day in November and start positioning themselves. Louis didn't. He announced yesterday, less than 48 hours before the votes are to be tallied. We're going to get into all of that and explain it. We have a special guest with us that we'll bring on in a little bit, someone who's a dear friend of ours here at... Uh, Enemies of the State, your host, Tom Trento, where we go uh, after uh, bad guys, Muslim spies, and government lies. Our job is to expose that and then provide a solution to the problems we're exposing. Our very good friend, should we say her name? Yes. yes. Keep the audience excited. They'll stick around. If they know name. she's coming, the, the ratings will be her better. Her name is Karen. It could be Armstrong. Could be Karen Armstrong, but I don't know if we'd be saying she's a good friend of ours. No, no. probably not. Probably not. No. Karen's something else. We'll tell you about her in a moment, <laughs> but she knows uh, Congressman Gomert very well through uh, an unfortunate tragedy in her family and her life, obviously. She'll be on in a few minutes. And then, if we have time at the end, I have a special treat for everybody. Uh, not a green book time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be. I'm going. <clears throat> come in a little tighter. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to be. I'm going to be doing a dramatic reading of a green book in front of a. I'm going to be doing a, a, My <laughs> fingers, man. I'm going to be doing a dramatic reading of Santa Claus Trophobia. Oh God! Phenomenal book. I'll just I'll just tease you a little bit. You ready? Yeah. I got to put this on. You guys are particularly going to like this. Santa Claus Trophobia. North of the North Pole and south of the stars lies a beautiful village called Stinky Cigars. <laughs> Did you get that? Stinky Cigars. North of the North Pole and south of the stars lies a beautiful village called Stinky Cigars. The name is so awful that folks pass right by it. It's a trick that we use to keep our town quiet. Stay tuned for the rest of the dramatic reading. <laughs> It's really a great little book. You're going to like it. It's, it's see-through, too. It's a see-through <laughs> book. And I read it the other day, just goofing around. 
I said, who the heck wrote this stuff? This is, you know, could be who for kids. It? Mike Reese wrote it. Mike Reese has four Emmy Awards for his work on The Simpsons. Oh, really? So one of The Simpsons writers wrote this. I'm, it was, it's so creative and so cool. It isn't funny. Later on, okay. The Invisible Book. But right now, uh, let's go to our special guest standing by. Due to the, um, the uh, we don't know if it's the N NSA or whether it's the CIA or the ABC or the DEF, somehow the video signal between us and our special guest is not uh, functioning, but we do her have her on an audio signal. Yes, correct? we do. Uh, welcome to the show, our dear friend Karen Vaughn. Yeah. There you go. Whoa, President hey. Karen. President. How are you guys? Well, you can't see the picture. Yes, sure can. she can. Sure she can. <laughs> Tom was, doesn't understand the technology yet, Karen. I was saying that to carry the mystique with our audience, but that's okay. I know you can see it, but we can only hear you. You have a very presidential-looking picture yes, there. Yes, you do. By, what is the background with that picture for the people in an automobile left 17 minutes after four we have a picture of karen vaughn who uh, lives north of us in uh, in florida and um, she's posing in a very pretty dress in front of the uh, old glory what's that all about karen i needed some headshots for my work with concerned veterans for america so that's well, apparently our uh, audio technology is not working. <laughs> oh, the as, phone doesn't work? The phone no, doesn't work. <laughs> our brand new almost studio that we're not in yet. She okay. sounds like she's wrestling a bear over there, too. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I was the uh, AB. Me? She's still there. You, you back? Still, you back? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, now we got you. Okay. You okay? Okay, is that better? Yes. Do we need to send help? Well, you know, it could be this 60-pound dog in the background. Oh, 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 oh. Many of you who are followers of our show, and we thank you for that more and more every day. Thank you for the emails that you're sending and the tweets and all that. Um, and the threats. <laughs> and the threats. Uh, Keep you on your toes. Yeah, Keep right. you on your toes, yeah. As the, uh, as the, uh, as the show grows becomes a little harder for us to answer all those uh, quickly. So there's usually a, a lag time. And um, uh, so our apologies for that. Keep your suggestions coming. I know many of you are sending in suggestions for guests and material for us to evaluate. Uh, it, it's overwhelming right now, but keep, keep it coming. We'll manage it. Um, Karen uh, is a uh, gold star mom. That's good and not good. Uh, we'll let her explain that. Uh, she's working with a great group right now, Conservative Veterans for America, and she has um, a very good relationship with our subject today, uh, Louis Gomer. Tell us a little bit, Karen, first about the Gold Star classification. Well, all that means is that I've actually had a child killed while serving America, and uh, my son Aaron Vaughn was a member of SEAL Team 6 and was killed on August 6, 2011 when a Chinook helicopter carrying him in to, uh, to help out a group of rangers who had come under heavy attack was shot down in the Tangy River Valley of Afghanistan and Aaron and 29 others on board that chopper died that night. Um, Saturday, August 6, 2011 was the day that radically changed Billy and I, my husband's life. and. It kind of threw us into a forum of knowing a lot of people we never dreamed in our life we would ever know, one of them being Louis Gomert. Yeah, we have two elements here, uh, folks. And again, if you follow the show, you know we've spent a lot of time on the shootdown of the SEAL Team 6 helicopter, call sign Extortion 17. Uh, and the Vaughns have written a book. Uh, do we have a picture of the book? We'll put that up shortly. Karen, uh, the way the radio audience works, uh, you know, the people cycle out every 15, 20 minutes. So could you please tell us if somebody's listening right now and wants to get in touch with a gold star mom and one way of, of uh, identifying gold star moms, they, they have like uh, someone who's a PhD as PhD after their name, they have GSM uh, after their name as the designation. So it's bad news. You lost a son. It's very good news. You had a son who um, gave his all that many can have freedom. Uh, how can people get in touch with you or your husband, Billy? 
They can visit our website, and that's simply forourson.us. That's F-O-R-O-U-R-S-O-N dot U-S. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, at For Our Son, and we have a Facebook page, For Our Son. So you can look us up any of those ways, and our website will lead you to an email link, and, and you can find out what, what we've been doing for the past three years since we lost Aaron. Yeah, it's very interesting, folks, as we look at Louis Gomart. 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 Yeah, Gomart. Gomart uh, you sound like uh, you're saying go kart. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, wait, Are you wait. from Nork? <laughs> from Nork? Yeah. Nork, New Jersey. Um, you haven't been getting in that bottle already, have you? <laughs> just a little touch. Just a little touch. No, no, no. No, I'm not a big uh, moonshine drinker, but I know you folks up in Tennessee, uh, that stuff flows through your blood veins. But, That's how um, they stay warm. But it, 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 it's how you stay warm. It's, it, 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 uh, I mean, we can do a whole show on Karen and Billy. and One of the key elements, and I think by application, this is important for Louis too, Louis Gomert, Gomert. Um, <laughs> Uh, Louis is a, a man of faith. He's got a very strong Christian belief. And most people don't know, he served as a judge. He was a, he was a JAG in the Army. He was a captain in the Army. Judge Advocate General. Yeah. He worked there. Then he, he became a judge in civil court, then became an appellate court judge, uh, selected by um, uh, the governor of, of Texas a few years back. Uh, and so he's a man who's made judgment decisions based upon law and, and biblical truth all his life. Um, and, and God has blessed his work in, in honoring uh, the, the truth of the United States and, and Christian truth. We see the same thing in, in Karen and Billy's life. Uh, they lived through a tragedy, but some of us saw that uh, back in those days, three years ago, August 6, 2011. You believe it's that long already, man? Two and wow. a half years. Uh, that uh, in terms of the impact the Vaughn family could have for the truth of God, the truth of the United States Constitution, that uh, the life of, of Aaron wasn't needlessly lost in terms of an eternal perspective or a cultural perspective. We, we believe it was needlessly lost from a military perspective because of the problems that we've brought out in Extortion 17. But uh, there was a, a, a handoff. The baton was handed off by Aaron to the Vaughns. Yes. And the work they have done over the past three years to impact the same fight that Aaron was fighting on a, on a kinetic, on a, on a battle format, they're fighting culturally. Uh, Aaron, I couldn't have had that kind of impact that they have. So it's a team effort. It's a Vaughn team effort uh, impacting the culture. And that's where they come in to play with Louis Gomert. When did you first meet him and what were the circumstances, Karen? Well, we started asking questions about Aaron's death uh, not long after, not long after the shoot down. There were some, there were some suspicious things that came up. And one of the First things that Billy did was start calling congressmen and trying to get trying to get some answers, trying to get a little bit deeper than answers, deeper answers than we were able to get from military leaders, um, or try to settle some disputes on some conflicting issues. And that's where Louis came into our life uh, very early on in this battle. Uh, Congressman Gomert and uh, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman became great allies of ours in trying to move forward, and. Then finally, what, what really launched our friendship was we found out that uh, while our son's body was being transferred from uh, Baghdad to America, we learned that a Muslim cleric was allowed to pray over his remains and the remains of all the other Americans on board. And he actually, that Muslim cleric actually damned our son's souls to hell. Uh, defined them as the losers, the Muslims, the winners, and defined them as, as infidels who would burn in hellfire. And we were outraged when we, when we learned this happened. And we took this information. We also found out that, that several of the, uh, that eight of the corpses had randomly been covered with an Islamic Republic of Afghanistan flag. And, and 
you know, Tom, you were you were pertinent in helping us get this translation. And, uh, you know, Billy just, just came in and reminded me, and I don't want to overlook that at all. And let me just stop right here and say, we would have never, never have gotten a foot out of our door here in Florida had it not been for Tom Trento. Tom, you have been an incredible friend. We have always understood that God God uniquely connected our lives with you. And it was because of the connections you had made through decades of furiously hard fought battles that you were able to help us get our message in the right hands. And we will be forever indebted to everything you've done for us. But but you actually probably were the one who initially introduced us to Louis Gohmert's staff, if I remember right. And uh, well, that's, let's, that's let's, where he came in, and he hey, helped, he hey, helped Karen, his whole national press conference. Hey, Karen, please please don't give him a big head. We've got no, no, we to we'll, deal with him we'll here do. the rest of the day, <laughs> no. and it's all, all going to be your fault. I don't have to call you and say, thanks, Karen. No, we look, we need to dedicate <laughs> one or two shows to my greatness, not a passing <laughs> So let's just pat it on the back. We'll keep, let's that. continue with because, the Gomer you know, I thing. I can come up with some some good lines, you know, criticizing okay. him as well if I think about it. But I'll okay. have to think about it. Well, you know, let's not shortchange me, please, on my own show, please. Uh, thank you. But you know what? Uh, let's let's go to um, a phenomenal event. With, uh, with you guys and uh, Congressman Louis Gomer, that illustrates exactly what you just laid out about his commitment to the Vaughns and to getting to the bottom of Extortion 17. Now, folks, we're here to say tomorrow Louis Gomer is going to be on the ballot in the United States Congress with his name next to uh, John Boehner's name and every single Republican congressperson will have the opportunity to vote for one or the other or to not vote, to vote present, which is the punk-ass thing to do. <laughs> it really is, right? And we're going to tell you all the dynamics there. But the guy we're talking about right now is going to be in a position to lead the House of Representatives in the last two years of this administration, this neo-Marxist administration, going into the Hillary campaign in the future, or the Rhino Republican campaign. So we want Louis there. We're illustrating his uh, character by what he did with one family uh, and, and, uh, a, on a key national security issue. So if he did what he did with the Vaughns as a, as a motivation in his life, it illustrates the type of individual that will be in a position of leadership unlike John Boehner, who has let us down tremendously on many of these uh, cultural, national security, and ethical issues. So what? this was May of what, 13 or 12? This was May, May of 2013 when we, when we really uh, started intimately digging in with, with Louis. Actually, it was a little earlier than that. We were already close friends. But May of 2013 is when we had the, the national press conference that Louis took part in. And, you know, can I just go back and, and throw in my analysis of Louis versus John Boehner? That would no, be, hang on. That hang, would be, hey, Karen, hang on. We're going to play the, we have a two-minute clip of the press, of an interview with Louis. Then after everybody sees and hears that, then then we want your uh, analysis of these two okay. guys. That, you you want to play that? 20, yeah, we, 29 minutes after Tom Trento, mm -hmm. WSBR Radio, 740 AM on your dial. TheUnitedWest.org. You can watch on uh, all kinds of different things. Now you can watch on mm -hmm. Xbox, I found out. Um, the Tea Party community, please go there, sign up, uh, join the team, the Tea Party uh, activists there. Are we ready with this other thing here? Yeah. yeah. Well, here we go. This uh, is May, I think it was May 13th, 2000, oh, the, May I, 2013. I got the one just today with Glenn Beck. Is that the one you're talking about? No, no, about? no. He so has one I sent up. it to you. I think you put it in. It's a... Okay. Uh, uh, where we, where we interviewed it's Louis, the Louis interview. live at the... Um, oh, at Representative the, Gomer to Outrage? That's the one. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Not the one with the Saudi Arabian drivers. <laughs> <laughs> that's for a different show. Um, so okay. here we go. Three, two, one. Okay. Congressman, how are you? Yeah, good to have okay. you here. Thank you for uh, joining in. We're doing a little pre-press conference. Short statement. Got a lot of people watching. Well, Why are you here? Well, it was bad enough 
that we put people in harm's way without the helicopter they needed, without the cover they needed, and without uh, providing, apparently there may have been a C-130 gunship that could have taken out the killers before and after they killed, but that didn't happen. And uh, it is just so outrageous that the best and brightest we had, the best trained, were put in such a situation. And of course, uh, as I'm sure you know, when the families were briefed and one of the fathers, one of our fallen SEAL team said, uh, why didn't you just send in a drone if it were such a hot area? And the Admiral said, because we're trying to win their hearts. If we're sending our military to try to win hearts and minds instead of defeat an enemy, we are completely messed up. But then, to have seen the video, when our American draped coffins are sitting there, and you know that at least some of them are Christian, and you have a Muslim imam come up and give the typical Muslim prayer, basically gloating over that anyone who challenges the warriors of Allah will be killed and go to hell and burn forever, and our military brings people in to do that. It's bad enough we didn't take proper care of such valued gifts as these SEAL team members and those helping, but then to add that kind of insult to injury is more than anyone should have to bear. Well, sir, thank you for being here. Yeah, we'll, thank we'll you see you afterwards. Me. Okay. That Thanks was, everybody uh, for staying with us. Um, that was uh, uh, May 2013, year and a half ago. Uh, man, time is flying, and uh, the Vaughns and several others had a press conference on extortion 17. You remember that day, Karen? Very, very well. Wow, how much has changed since that day? <laughs> yeah. Well, share your thoughts on the uh, congressman, particularly as he faces um, a very critical election uh, 24 hours from now. You know what, Tom, Mark, Damon, all of you, I know you'll agree with me. I, I, I'm, I'm a bit of a cut up, but I'm going to be really serious here for just a minute because here's the thing. I, and this, may, this is going to even make me emotional, but here's the thing. We actually have an opportunity right now, America, to change this Congress. It can only happen from a, from a leadership position, such as Speaker of the House. And what we've got here is an opportunity for a man who has been removed from power in every way possible by this Congress. We have an opportunity for this man who has been removed because he is a true American patriot, conservative constitutionalist, a person who believes in our military, a person who believes in the right to life, a person who loves Americans and loves the American dream. He has been set aside continually, and it's only because of where he's from that he's con continued to be elected by his people who love, revere, and honor this man for all the right reasons. And we have an opportunity to put a hero, a national treasure, in the leadership position of this new Congress. And you know what? I believe that in November, the people spoke loud and clear that we are sick and tired of the status quo. We are sick and tired of a Speaker of the House being somebody like John Boehner, who is no more a statesman than my dog in there in the cage who would eat my shoe if I let her out and didn't watch her. I mean, the, you know, what we've got here is we've got a new Congress. We've got a new chance. We have got an overwhelming majority. We've got a Senate. We've got an opportunity, America, to really make a difference. But that cannot happen if the leadership in those chambers is not the correct leadership. If we've got somebody who is always going to put every important issue on the back burner, who is going to slam conservatives under his foot every turn, we are never going to get anywhere, no matter how many good conservatives we get in that house. And this is our chance. Louis Gohmert is the real deal. He is a national hero. He is a man who does what he says, and he means what he says, and says what he means. He has been faithful to this family. We were nobodies. And this man took us under his arm and, and walked us through every possible scenario that he could create, that he could, that he could help us through. We have even stayed many times in his chief of staff's home in Washington, D.C. This is how much he has given himself to us, how much his team there in Washington has given himself 
given themselves to the American people, us, parents of a dead Navy SEAL. And, and I'm just imploring people. I've spent all morning on Twitter, on Facebook, busting this out, making sure that I've tweeted every single representative including some of the Democrats, uh, telling them that I demand they put Representative Louie Gohmert as the Speaker of the House, that they, that they put the gavel in his hand and take it out of John Boehner's. We will get nowhere. If we leave it here, it's going to be the same BS we've dealt with for all these years. Nothing will change. Yeah. 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 Well said. Tell it like it is, girl. Yeah, yeah. you go, girl. Yes. And, and, um, and just to emphasize Karen's point is, this is not just some, you know, everyday political thing in Washington, D.C. that just kind of happens and no, it's not going to make any difference. This is a game changer. Game changer. It complete is. Complete game changer. Everything. That's right. And, you know, I know I've talked with him, you know, a few times, you know, while I was, you know, through, through my travels. And, and the guy is as, for my own, to highlight what you're saying even to someone like me, who's not a gold star father or anybody, I have no, no, no reason other th to be there than being there as a citizen. And I've come up there with um, you know, Louis, and I've talked with him, and he's, he is like spot on on all the issues, 100% with us on the on the Islam thing, 100% with us on border security, 100% with us on. I tell you what, you could not find a better person to put in that position with character with gravitas and with wit and with intelligence he is if i had to pick anyone in the country to put in that position it would be him it, me too me i too. i recommended and, and he run for president that, i say that from deep personal knowledge of this man's heart his soul his commitment to america and especially right now as much as much issue as our nation is having with national security there is no one no one in that congress i would trust more than louis gohmert to to get the right things done with national security I, the man can be trusted he he is he needs this type of power if we're going to see reform that's where it's going to start this is a bright light of hope to me and i am going to be devastated on a personal level tomorrow if that if that gavel falls back in the hands of john scumbag boehner yeah. oh it. yeah he is he's a total total dirt bag you know and no more is that, that relevant than you know his ties with this man Grover Norquist. But we but, won't. It's not. Yeah. It's not a. Let's just say it's not a bash Boehner day. It's too easy. It's too I don't think people are aware of who Louis Gomert is. No, they're not. That, that, and, that's the purpose. No, that's the purpose. Not unless you've had the the great pleasure of meeting mm -hmm. him. Because I'll yeah. tell you one thing about Louis too is anyone that meets him will instantly Boom. consider him a Instant. friend yep. because the man is as genuine as they come. Actually, I would I would like to play that that little bit of that Beck interview to actually yeah, sure, in, introduce sure. the people to Louis yeah. on the issues other than our Islamic issue and things yeah. like that. No, he's but, you know all the conservative organizations rate him very very highly. When he was speaking, the the downside of Louis versus Boehner. Boehner's an operator. Yeah. Boehner, you know Boehner's he's smoking connected. his cigarettes and. You know, he's he's sliding here and he's cutting deals here and all of that stuff. Right, that picture right there. Yeah, Banner there with is. Grover. Lou, Lou. Damon? Yes? Damon, you have something to say about Grover Norquist? <laughs> you know I love him. <laughs> he's got a lot to say. I have a him. book for you. <laughs> um, but uh, but, but uh, Congressman Gomer, he, he's from the South, from Texas. He's grown up there, all of that. You know, he's got a little draw, a little southern Texan draw. He's he's very mild mannered, and a lot of people, particularly people from the east, read that as dumb or Weakness slow. Or oh, whatever. that guy's super, super intelligent. He's so bright. He's so deep. He's been a judge. He judges stuff. That's what he does. When he was talking to Karen, to me, uh, as Karen was listening, uh, the uh, the interview from May of 2013, he's talking about military stuff. Right. He looks like a middle-aged, bald guy, you know, trying to figure out, what, you know, to some people, military stuff. He was a captain in the United States Army. Yeah. He understands military stuff. He worked as an attorney in, in the service, so had to deal with all types of issues. He fired guns. He, he trained. He did all of this. He took an oath to defend the United States in the military, and he took that same oath to defend the Constitution in 
the United States Congress 10 years ago, basically, and as a judge. And you could always, you could always make decisions by default. It's always better to make a decision by design who's the best out of this. But who's the least worst? You can go that way. We look at President Obama and Louis Gohmert. Who would you <laughs> rather have right now as the president? I know. Right? By default, we'll take Louis better than this guy here. But we are arguing today that Louis jumps over the president and everybody else. Well, you, get you know, to know, you know what it is? It's during these last elections. During these last elections, everybody went to the poll, held their nose, and pulled the lever. Okay, or filled into the color dot, whatever you do in whatever state you are. But this is someone to get excited about. This is, no, I'm not just like voting against Obama. I want this guy in this position. Whenever, whenever he's doing, um, conducting interviews, uh, congressional interviews, House interviews, I mean, they're always, the sound bites are always on the news because he's so good at cross He's so witty and funny. Do <laughs> well, you remember it in APAC when we saw him this last year in APAC? We went to an event. CPAC, one of his CPAC, CPAC not yes. APAC. Hello, CPAC. Um, we spoke to him, and I told you, and I told him, I said, please run for president yeah, in 2016. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I said, you and Alan you West. You mean in that private meeting you two had? What? In that private <laughs> meeting? <laughs> Let's show the audience the private meeting you and Congressman Gomer had. Yeah. Yes, it was a very private meeting. Yeah, private at the, meeting. At the, at the, there uh, it is, At right the Breitbart there. party. It was so private. <laughs> Um, but I, my dream ticket well, he was Louis Goldberg and wait, Alan wait, West. No, I want, I want to highlight his story. He says, when he talks about running for president, and he goes, uh, and he says, nobody has ever won president who is bald. And so every time I see him, I, I say, hey, Louis, I'm getting you a toupee. Okay, I he, he's uh, yeah. That, that's his. Is that like some little? Uh, yeah, I didn't know of, that. I guess Ford, oh, Ford wasn't elected. Yeah, he says no. Beautiful. But he goes back. People, you know what? Here's the thing, Louis. Nobody in Congress can stand Louis Gohmert. Does that not make you love him? (laughs) I know. Of course, you gotta love him. Well, do you know that? Do you know that he nominated in the last Congress? Do you know that he nominated Newt Gingrich for Speaker of the House? (laughs) The man. No, no, the last one. And he meant it. No, I, I. You know who I think he nominated? We can double check for Speaker. Alan West. Alan West. Did well, he? He, no, the last one he did, he did Newt Gingrich for the, at the last oh, congressional. Oh, the one before well, maybe, that? No, I'm not sure what year it was, but it's since we've met him, he actually stood, stood up and, and said he nominated Newt Gingrich, which most people don't know that the speaker doesn't even have to be in Congress. No, you don't, you don't have to but be it, a member. I mean, it's I an interesting fact. That. No. But uh, um, yeah, but no, it's, it's great. I would like to play that. That's a really good interview. All right, let's put it on. Let's, uh, we're going to listen to... Uh, it was uh, a glimpse t- this Beck morning. This morning, at, and it was a really great interview. It's a very short two-minute clip, and right, I don't know, Karen, if you've heard it, 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 but listen to it here. Here we go. Here we go. Glenn uh, Beck. Louis, you're Speaker of the House. Tell me how things change. What do you do? We start using, uh, as was promised, every weapon at our disposal to stop the illegal unconstitutional amnesty. We secure the border, and we make it clear to the president Yes, we know we need immigration reform, but we're not changing anything until you secure the border. And here's the money to do it. And you're not get we're defunding your czars. We're defunding everything that means anything to you that America doesn't need. We're defunding all of these things unless you secure the border. And until you secure the border, as confirmed by unanimous border states, we're not doing immigration reform. Then we decentralize the speaker's power. That's that's a problem. It's a monopoly. You only get one vote on the steering committee, not four or five. We get in high gear and we finish all investigations. We hold groups and agencies and departments accountable for wrongdoing. We throw out the current tax code. I want a flat tax. I want a, a fair tax, a sales tax. Let's have that debate. We throw out the code, and then we go with whichever wins, fair tax or flat tax. We end the automatic increase every stinking year in every federal (laughs) department and agency's budget. Nobody else gets that. The government shouldn't either. We stop the government spying on American people. Uh, We we create some uh, reform in our committee structure. We've got to have a public assistance committee or subcommittee that, 
that has every single piece of welfare in it. That's how we've been beat for 40 years is because if you say, wait, I don't think we ought to fund this program. It's, it's duplicitous. There's too many like it. It's waste. Then they say, oh, you hate children or women or veterans. No, we don't. We love them all. But we don't need 87 agencies doing the same thing. We create an energy policy that does not provide any subsidies for any energy. Let's let the market tell us which energy to use. We have competitive group score in our bills. We end the CBL monopoly of score. We get screwed by them virtually every time. We we uh, force removal of at least two-thirds of the regulations. Reagan forced Congress to do it, and he had a Democratic Congress. And this is a biggie. Every two years, instead of having, before we have a speaker's election, uh, the, the party in power has a vote of confidence or no confidence. And if the speaker gets a no confidence vote, he can't run, and we get a new speaker. That's the way it ought to be wow. so that we don't wow. have a dictatorship in Congress. Hang on, hang on. Uh, I'm feeling bad now because the, uh, I, I mean, this is like, what, what's the worst team in the NFL right now? Uh, Miami uh, Dolphins. No. <laughs> <Miami. laughs> Probably. Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Jets this is like the, the Jaguars winning the Super Bowl this year. Yeah. You know, Louis, Louis has, it's a long shot. It really is. No, it is. For a lot of reasons. Um, that's why I started out run Louis win. He's a winner in our eyes just for running, right. providing the motivation, and excitement. But I'm feeling bad after listening to two minutes of some of the changes that would be implemented in the United States of America. Let's bring in because I believe I can't see you guys, but I believe there's uh, Vaughn squared there. I think there's a second Vaughn yeah, there's in the a, house. Yeah, there's a one oh, hiding. Oh, in there. hold on, let me get the master. Hold on. Right, <laughs> are you talking about that dog? <laughs> the dog. Are you, oh, like, you're talking about Father Vaughn. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see if but Father anyway. Vaughn is there. I want to. Well, speaking wanna... of the Vaughns, for those of you who are not aware of uh, their book, uh, well, we have their book, but also Operation Three Hundred. Yes. It is a camp uh, that uh, was actually started by Aaron Carson Vaughn's sister, Billy and Karen's daughter, and what it does is they. Um, take in at no expense to the campers. The campers are all children of fallen heroes, fallen American soldiers. And uh, basically they get together and do manly man things. Uh, everyone is a volunteer there. And uh, we well, got Billy on the line. We, we do have Billy. Billy, you there? I am, Tom. All right. Uh, uh, who was the guy that was just talking there? Uh, I, I recognize that voice. <laughs> uh, that was Damon, Billy. I, I, no, it's, was that really Damon? Or was that, that, the, that uh, was Damon, but your buddy <laughs> is here, Imam Abdullah. He wants to say hello to you, yes, Billy. Yeah, yeah, I thought it sounded like a little air. Oh, there. yes. Is this Father Vaughn? <laughs> <laughs> hello, <laughs> Billy. I hate you very much, you infidel. <laughs> I'm glad you are not here live in studio. <laughs> but Billy, um, we, uh, I mean, we all saw this yesterday morning. He announced it on Fox. In fact, I videotaped, I rewound the Fox segment, videotaped it and put it up on the internet before uh, Fox put it up and, and before Louis Gohmert put it up. And we got it out and told everybody, get ready, start moving. We'll do a show tomorrow. We'll tell you what you have to do. You guys are going nuts trying to get the word out. What are your thoughts about Louis Gohmert becoming Speaker of the House, Billy Vaughn? Well, I tell you, you know what, this, this, is, this is what I began to think yesterday. Well, let me say first, yes, and Karen has. She's been doing everything. She's been in contact with uh, Connie Hare, uh, <clears throat> Louis' uh, chief of staff, and she's been trying to get the word out, and I know y'all have. But I began to think this yesterday afternoon. It ran through my mind that if Louis were to be elected Speaker of the House, that that if the rest of the House representatives elected Louis to be that to, to be the speaker, that it would cause me to have hope or to have some assurance or trust in our House of Representatives. Not because it's in Louis, but because the representatives there who would elect Louis, that we may have men and women there that uh, we could trust to begin restoring our republic, you know? Um, that was my initial hope, Tom. 
and that's, thoughts. That's a, that's a very good point because the election is simply indicative of the will of the people, like we saw with, uh, with Obama and, and six disastrous years. Uh, and I, didn't, I wasn't looking at that angle, that if he did get elected, then um, somebody there sees, uh, sees black and white, sees clearly, or sees red, white, and blue. That's a, a, a very, very good point. And we all know, I mean, we, we, we're not new at this game. We know that uh, though one person can make a big difference, one person can't make all the difference that one person wants to make. Our, our founders understood that, and they put these roadblocks in place for people like Obama. They'll also obstruct Louis to some extent if he got in. But if he got 50% of his views Implement it and the country moving in that direction. 10%. That is phenomenal. Ten percent. Ab- yeah, ten percent. Yeah. It's just Unbelievable. stop. It's it's not just implementing his views. It's putting the finger in the dike and stopping the flow yep. coming our way. And, and with Louis, there's a hope of reversing it. On the Fox show, Billy yesterday he said, and and I think he waited. Uh, what well, question was raised earlier? Why did why did Louis wait forty eight hours before the election? A very significant uh, poll came out showing that uh, 60% of Republicans don't want Boehner, 60% of Americans. 30% of the Republicans are thinking about leaving the party. Not Mm -hmm. voting Republican in 2016. Why, Billy, you you guys, you and your wife, you've been up on the Hill and in Washington more than most people in the past three years, more than most people have in a lifetime. What, what's going on in America, and, and why is there this dissatisfaction with Washington? <clears throat> well, Tom, uh, you know, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's clear um, just after this last election, I mean, there, there was, uh, there, once again, an overwhelming, uh, resounding victory for Republicans again in the House, even gaining seats in the House, and then retaking the Senate with and I believe the message from Americans was one, was one message to Republicans. Stop Barack Hussein Obama, whatever the cost. I believe that's, I believe that's what was sent to the Republicans. I believe the Republicans under, uh, elected understood that. But then the next thing we began to see immediately was both houses seemed business as usual, uh, work with Obama, uh, you know, and and behind the back deals and things, just like the people, just like there hadn't been an election. And that's what you get from Congress. Louis is an exception. There are a few others up there. Trent Franks is another one. Yep. Whenever you go talk to them, they're, they are who they are, and they are always who they are. But there are very few exceptions uh, to those kind of men and women in Washington, D.C. Chaffetz, one of the good ones, I would say. Yeah. But yeah. in the hearing about extortion 17 and what happened to Aaron and those guys, Chaffetz smoothed it over, knows the questions weren't answered. Uh, he, having eight months, said himself, we've been looking at this for eight months, and we know he'd had, we know he had had the 1,300 pages for over eight months because we had given them to him. And then his uh, committee guy, Jim Lewis, told me ahead of time, a week before the hearing, you're going to be frustrated at the hearing. And then the questions weren't answered, uh, and, and, uh, and Chaffetz smoothed it over, saying a lot of this was classified. We know it wasn't classified. We had access to the answers. There were no rebuttals like they, the congressman hadn't seen them. For The committee members hadn't seen the information They'd had eight months to look at it. There were no rebuttal questions. And then Chaffetz came on Fox News that night and said, I hope the families are happy. You know, here again, families came. They spent money. They went to Washington, D.C. Many families didn't come uh, who wanted to come, but the cost was too great to come from the West Coast. And then Congress shoved it down our throat one more time because they want to get along with. And, in fact, it was said to me by, by somebody on the committee, the the uh, con- the Congress is not going to ask the Department of Defense any questions that make the Obama administration uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Are you kidding me? Are Un- you kidding me? Unbelievable. And, That's and, the kind of government we got. And and we know because of that, sixty percent 
of uh, Republicans don't want Boehner. 25, 30% of Republicans aren't are considering not voting Republican because the same old, same old. Our argument today, ladies and gentlemen, at 55 minutes after 4 o'clock on the East Coast, just a couple minutes left, Louis Gomer running tomorrow. Uh, Karen, how could people uh, actually make a difference by using social media to, uh, to help Louis right now? What should they be doing? Well, the biggest thing you can do is you can tweet uh, all of your congressmen in your state or anybody else's. You know, Twitter's great for that. They can't question who you are. Your tweets will get retweeted. And when you do that, just make sure that you include a couple hashtags. Include, you know, at Rep. Louis Gohmert, uh, for, for uh, include the House GOP. If you're familiar with, with uh, hashtags at all, if you will, if you will hashtag T-C-O-T, I don't know all these military things, but treasure, coast, O, treasure, whatever. Tango, <laughs> Charlie. Treasure. Oscar. Oscar. What are, oh, oh, Tango. There you go. And Oscar then, Tango. Oh, Char- oh, Tango. And then why Charlie, O, oh, Tango? These will get it. These will hashtag to other Here's people mine. who will retweet you. We can spread the word like that. E- if you use email, email your congressman. If you use the phone, if you're most comfortable with that. Phone your congressman. You can look up directory of representatives at house.gov and get all of this information. But at the very least, do something. This is your opportunity, America, to really finally make a difference. Amen. All right. Yes. That's, uh, yes. From the Vaughns, we got to let you guys go right now. We're uh, at the bewitching hour on Monday, January 5th. Tomorrow is the vote. Folks, so start tweeting. Go to house.gov. I just did it in two seconds here. You can find out uh, exactly who your representatives are. If you don't know hashtags or Treasure Coast codes or any of that stuff, you can make a phone call and send an email. Very, very, very important. Uh, actually, one of the other things you could do also is uh, FreedomWorks has a really good uh, area on their page where the, the, the congressman, the those swing votes, the ones that are on the fence, is, you know, get them motivated. Target those guys. Target those yes. guys. And also, if we just get the conservative uh, Republicans, the ones that are rated like 95 and above, on, you know, he, he could feasibly win this thing. He really could. They're, they're, it would revolutionize America. He yeah. could be a contender. There are yeah. scenarios. <laughs> he could be a contender. We can win! <laughs> All right, Vaughn's, we're going to let you go. Billy and Karen, thank you very much. Tom Trento, take care, guys. We'll see you. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Bye. WSBR Radio at uh, 58 minutes. We only have a couple of minutes left um, in our uh, Louis Gohmert, Congressman Louis Gohmert, Texas. Just got elected to his fifth term, starting his ninth year. Uh, Army, great education, family man. I think it's three daughters. He's 61 years old. He uh, went to law school, went into the Army, captain in the Army, four years in the United States military, served as a judge advocate general, dealing with all types of legal military issues where you deal with top secret stuff, then went into uh, becoming a public servant. And if we had to say anything about him, contrary to John Boehner, who is a uh, public what? Drunk. We're, but no, we're not. Well, we I'll, give you, I, I'll give you a, a perfect example of John Boehner. This is what Louis Gohmert told me about him, talking about the weapons in Gaza. He said he went up to Boehner and he says, uh, Speaker Boehner, did you know about the weapons being transferred from Benghazi? And is that the reason the Benghazi investigation is getting stopped? And he goes, we're, we're, I, I know, know nothing about, uh, about the weapons transfers. But then he came back and he said, yeah, he actually did. He knew everything about what was going on. And that's the reason the whole thing got, got submarine was because Boehner didn't want his complicity in the whole weapons thing knowledge. And we about. made the connection between extortion, which happened August 6, 2011, and then Benghazi, which was 9-11, September 2012. We made those connections. And then actually... We made the connection between extortion, April, uh, August 6, 2011, and May 1st, 2011, SEAL Team 6 killing Osama bin Laden and the payback. So all of this stuff is a mess. But the bottom line is John Boehner is a, uh, is a politician. I think a politician's politician. The guy was into and politics Gohmert, his whole life. Louis Gohmert's been a leader his whole life. 
and Louis Gohmert is a statesman. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's the big idea for today. Please get out, contact your own representatives. Let's get Louis Gohmert, a true statesman, elected Speaker of the House. See you tomorrow. <laughs>